Juliana Hatfield. Wow. I can't believe I am finally talking with you. I, I've got a bucket list of people I, I would love to interview. Last year I got to see Liz Fair in Cat Power, and now I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Parlor Room February 13th up in Northampton. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the show? Our, I know you recently put out an album featuring songs from The Police. Is that going to be the the whole uh, group of songs you're going to be doing performing up there or are you going to do a mix we're, we're going to do a handful of police songs but we're i'm not going to focus totally on that because i want to hit all of um i want to hit a lot of the albums in my huge repertoire including the um songs the olivia newton john album that i made a couple of years ago we're going to do a couple of those maybe and a couple from I'm just going to try to just sort of like hit a lot of my albums from over the years and do a little smattering of things from every era. You could go on for hours and hours and have like a couple intermissions with all the, the music you've put out. You've put out over, I could. you know, almost 20 albums just as a solo I, artist, I believe, right? Yeah, I mean, I could do that if I could only remember all of the songs. Cause it's kinda, like, every every single time I go on tour, I have to really um, do my homework, and I have to kind of relearn a lot of stuff. Cause I, because the more songs that I write, that's just, that's the more songs that I can forget how to play. You know, it's just like my brain is becoming really full of information, and so it gets hard, a little bit more tricky it, with every passing year that um and every new album it's like a little bit more complicated to remember everything mm-hmm. do you usually bring out the same people um to back you up or so, well not exactly i mean i kind of switch around so they have to learn it too time. well but what right now i'm going to be do, touring with um dean fisher's playing bass who played on my last couple of tours, and he and I were playing together um, way, way, way back for the Julian Hatfield 3, which was my first Atlantic Records album, and he was part of that, and so we go way back, but there have been large chunks of time in which we were not playing together. So, yeah, he's like very, it's very familiar playing with him, he's like um, an old friend, and he's, he's got musical chemistry. That's always a plus. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to say you've inspired me to read, and that that doesn't come often. I haven't read a book probably in fifteen years, and the last book I read was about how grunge changed the music scene in the nineties. Uh, when I grow up, a memoir. I I read the prologue last night, and now I definitely I'm going to buy the book tonight. Uh, I want to definitely so you, read this. So, you, so you only read rock memoirs? Is that what you're saying? I, uh, I'm just, I'm not good at reading. I fall asleep after a couple paragraphs. So I don't read really? much. But, but that last book kept my interest and kept, I didn't fall asleep. So, and I have a feeling I don't think I'm going to fall asleep to your memoir either. Well, uh, you never know. Maybe, uh, I always think that thing, things that make me fall asleep are good things. Because I, I love sleeping more than I love anything else. So I'm always happy to fall asleep. I'm the, well, op- I'm the opposite, though. Sorry, what? I'm what? saying I'm the opposite. <laughs> I want to stay awake. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think you're right. Stay awake. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be sleeping. That's a bu- I'm going to get a bumper sticker. I'd rather be sleeping. I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but sure. I, I imagine if I had a chance to read your book ahead of time, I, I probably would answer most of my questions I wanted to ask you today. One question I, I often ask people that I used to listen to back in the 90s or so, it's, it's kind of a, a philosophical question. And I think I got a, a, just a touch of the answer from your prologue. But if you could, you know, if looking back, if you could sign a major label deal, have a hit or two, you know, be at the top of the pop charts and then be done, never be heard from again? Or would you rather follow the course pretty much that you've followed where you've got a core, solid core following of fans who really love and appreciate what you've put out and with the creative ability to put out whatever you want and not what a major label wants you to put out? Well, 
Well, that's a complicated question because the, in my situation, the major label never tried to bend me or shape me into anything other than I was mm-hmm. musically. Yeah. So I, I really feel like I ha- I've always had freedom to do what I want to do. And so I, I guess in a way I had kind of had the best of both worlds, but I, I'm also a fatalist, so I would just have to say that the situation as it is is probably the right situation because I'm just like very much um, into accepting where wherever I am in life. And um, so, yeah, and I do think about that sometimes. I think about what would it be like to have had really, really big commercial success, um, lots and lots of fame. And I think that, I really think that being really famous would be a kind of hell. Be living, living in hell to be, to be looked at, stared at every time you go outside. Um, and just be kind of, I love, I just love being, I feel very invisible when I go out, out in the world. And I really love that feeling. And I, I, it's a precious situation. I mean, you know, I feel like I escaped fame. Not that I ever, I didn't, I, did, I escaped it because I never tried to be famous. And I think if you, if you want to be famous, you can put an effort into becoming famous. And I never did that. And I feel, I feel like I escaped that. Um, and I love, I love not being famous. <laughs> It's a bless. It's a blessing, really. But you know, it's like. But this, at the same time, I have to, I have to make a living like anyone else. I mean, I consider my, my music is my job, and and I don't have. I I can't be really romantic about it, and I can't live in a fantasy world. It's it's work, you know. What I do, my work is my work, and it's not. It's not like um, a fantasy. It's real. Does your work come easy to you, or is is it like more of a look? laborious chore it's both it's, you know it's like um, I, I, I see every cup as half empty and half full at the same time so sometimes it's really a slog like a drag and it's like doing a math problem and I hate doing math and sometimes you know sometimes it's very physically draining like when I go on the road I sometimes feel like it's going to kill me just because it takes so much out of me but then um, when I'm writing or when I'm in the studio recording, there can be just these really wonderful moments of um, beautiful accidents and just like bl- when things come together and they start grooving and it becomes this thing that's transcendent and it's more than me and it's bigger than what I made happen and just like little magic moments happen and that's really, and then, and then yeah, you know, like when you get into the zone or something and the creative zone and things are, it's like you're being it's like you're pulling snowflakes out of the sky and they're um, being given to you and it's just like magic and it's great. And there's an ease to it in those moments. But, but other times it's really difficult and complicated. Sound like a bit of a realist. Enjoying life for what it is and what you can get out of yeah, it. Yeah, like I, I try to not take anything for granted and um, I try not to complain too much. I, and to just count my blessings all the time. We touched on earlier about how you um, put out an album of Olivia Newton-John songs and, and then Police songs. What inspired those twists on um, the classics? Uh, it's hard to answer that. I, I just get these ideas, you know, like um, these ideas pop into my head and I, I have to um, follow through for my own curiosity. Did, were you more interested in, in trying to put your own twist on them and see how they sound that way? Well, yeah. I mean, what other reason is there? You I mean, know, not like, going to go out there and what? try to mimic what Olivia Newton-John put out, right? What? Why would I do that? I can't, yeah. I'm not her. You know, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not her. I don't have her voice. I don't have her. Um, her skills. Her other skills, whatever, uh, such as they are. You know, I'm me. She's her. I, I really wanted to give them my own um, uh, signature while being respectful of the originals. I, it was, I really just wanted to um, celebrate my love of that music and to share my love. That's what I wanted to do. And, and also it helps, pl- pl- learning and playing other people's songs helps 
to give me perspective on my own writing and it helps to give me a break it's like a it's a, it's a break from my own writing and it's like a palate cleanser from m- making my own music are there any artists that you would uh, like to collaborate with any chance of reaching out to now um there's no, no one in particular that is coming into my mind but some I gotta say the Paul Westerberg collaboration was awesome. <laughs> oh, the I don't cares, uh, man. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I first saw that at the studio. I'm like, I'm playing this. I know that must have been must have seemed kind of random to people out there, but I've known him for a really long time, and and yeah, he I was a, he was such a huge fan of the replacements when I was little. When I was a little, little <laughs> teen. Yep. That um, I yeah, like I just felt such a something about singing with Paul's voice felt so natural, just because I, I'm, I know that voice so well, it's so familiar. It's almost like a part of me. His voice it was like a, it's like a family. His voice is like a family member. That's yeah. how well I knew it. Yeah, it was kind of an honor to be asked. I think most of the songs on that album were songs he wrote while he was performing with the replacements and then he he invited you to sing those with him right yeah kind of i mean we like i said i've known him for a long time and so it was wasn't really a it wasn't a um a major decision like we should make an album together it was more like he would would play me old recordings or new recordings that he had made Hmm. and um I, i would just sort of think like what this is so great why don't you release this or why don't we re-record it and and I think he just didn't have anyone around telling him that you know like he's got so much he's you know he was writing all the time when he had all this material and I just I was just trying to get him to share it with people and I think that that was part of my role and I don't care as it was like pulling stuff out of him and giving it to the people your show on February 13th at the Parlor Room in Northampton. I can't wait to see it. Um, before I let you go, I have to ask you a question I ask everybody. While you're out on the road, touring wherever, across the nation, across the country, uh, or overseas, is there a place you look forward going to that has your favorite comfort food, like a, a local dive bar or a local veggie burger place? Some of my favorite places have closed. It's like they're not all there anymore. Um. Oh my god! Like now, I can't think of anything. (laughs) Um. Oh, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that right now. I can't think of anything. Um. Damn. I wish I could come back to the question, but I think we're almost done, right? I could go on for (laughs) forever with you. I just Um, don't want to take all your time if if, just a oddball question if you could send yourself a message back 20 years ago to your 20 year old self uh what would you say would you give give yourself some advice uh i don't know i never i never listened to advice i wouldn't have listened i wouldn't listen to myself if i gave my old if i gave my young self advice my young self wouldn't listen i'm a punk i understand what you're saying (laughs) you know like i was raised not to respect authority and I was raised to think for myself so well you know for better or for worse I I wish that I had been given more advice when I was younger but no one everyone knew I wouldn't listen so no one really gave me any advice you learn through experience I guess I mean one hopes I'm still learning I don't (laughs) always um, learn but I'm trying we seem to repeat we repeat bad patterns of behavior and thinking and um it's like adult life is just a process of trying to pull yourself back from repeating bad patterns yeah right exactly Juliana thank you so much for taking some time to talk with me and I can't wait to see you up in Northampton alright you're welcome thank you for calling and talking